The following podcast is based on the Cambridge A-Level History Curriculum. Greetings podcast listeners and welcome to the first episode of my A-Level series on Hitler's Germany from 1929 to 1941. When America sneezes, Europe catches a cold. Originally, at the time of Napoleon, this quote was, when Paris sneezes, Europe catches a cold, but in the 20th century, this is used to reflect on the dominating and massively influential role of America in terms of the global economy. This quote is particularly accurate when looking at the Great Depression of 1929, as we all know it was caused by the Wall Street crash. Countries that were hit hardest by this were Great Britain, France and Germany especially. The Great Depression is one of the reasons why Hitler rose to power in Germany, as his party was able to present solutions to the economic problems which the Great Depression had caused. However, we are going to begin with a quick background by looking at the German presidents and chancellors from 1928 onwards. General Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg held the position as president from the 12th of May 1925 to the 2nd of August 1934. There are five important chancellors it would be good for you to remember. Hermann Müller of the Social Democratic Party of Germany served from June 28, 1928 to the 27th of March 1930. Heinrich Brüning of the Centre Party served from the 27th of March 1930 to the 30th of May 1932. Franz von Papen, who was non-party, served as Chancellor from the 1st of June 1932 to the 17th of November 1932. Kurt von Schleicher, who was also non-party, held the position from the 3rd of December 1932 to the 28th of January 1933. Finally, Adolf Hitler of the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi Party, served as Chancellor from the 30th of January 1933 to the 30th of April 1945. In 1934, upon the death of Hindenburg, he combined the presidency and chancellorship to form the Führer of Germany. Now, let's look into the Great Depression of 1929. It occurred following the Wall Street crash, when the American stock market lost 89% of its value, causing many Americans to become unemployed and the US economy to collapse. It resulted in the US loans to Germany, which were provided under the Doors Plan, being recalled. This caused the fragile Weimar economy to collapse as it relied heavily on these US loans. By 1933, the Weimar Republic's unemployment rate had risen to just over 30%, resulting in the rise of extremist parties who presented solutions to helping the German economy recover. As the coalition government of the Weimar Republic was unable to decide on how to solve the economic issues, President Hindenburg increasingly used Article 48, declaring it times of emergency allowing him to frequently make new laws and decisions by himself, making the supposed democracy of the Weimar Republic look weak and ineffective. The Great Depression significantly contributed to the decline of the Weimar government. After 1929, the government's main aim was to reduce expenditure in order to cope with the reduced tax revenue caused by declining economic activity, Therefore, between 1929 and 1933, the budget for pensions of victims of war was cut by a third, which caused anger among ex-soldiers, who had always felt betrayed by the Weimar government. Many German industries began to decline, and Germany was unable to afford to import the number of raw materials and food it required, as the government found it difficult to borrow money from potential German investors, who had lost savings in 1929, and the foreign governments who might set unacceptable terms. The number of bankruptcies increased significantly, as did unemployment, which was 1.4 million in 1928. This rose quickly to 2 million by the end of 1929, and by 1932 the number had risen to 6 million, about a third of the German workforce. However, the government did very little to solve the problems as Germany had recovered from a minor slump of 1926 without government intervention. In March 1930, Müller's SPD-led coalition government collapsed when it failed to agree on what cuts to make for unemployment relief. It was replaced by the centre-right coalition held by Heinrich Brüning of the Centre Party. Chancellor Brüning feared hyperinflation and government budget deficits over unemployment. As a result, he decided to increase taxes, implement wage cuts and reduce government spending. However, this likely exacerbated the problem and caused further resentment among German people who were already struggling to feed themselves. 
This scheme by Brüning was actually rejected by the Reichstag, however it was supported by Hindenburg, so he used decrees under Article 48 of the Weimar Constitution to enact the policies himself, and this demonstrated the weakness of the Weimar politics. Von Hindenburg was a militaristic, authoritarian man who had never liked democracy. As a president, he used decrees frequently, and not in times of real emergency. He issued five decrees in 1930, 44 in 1931, and 60 in 1932. He also used his power to appoint and dismiss chancellors from March 1930 to January 1933. Following the suspension of reparations in 1931, Chancellor Brüning set up public work schemes, and his successor, von Papen, began to allocate unused land to peasants and workers who had lost their savings and jobs. However, the damage to their livelihoods which had been caused by the Great Depression was irreparable, and these schemes came too late for the government to regain public confidence and support. So, how did the Weimar government finally decline and Hitler gain influence? The fall of Müller's SPD coalition that had a majority in the Reichstag led to a large increase in the number of anti-democratic deputies in the Reichstag, a trend that continued into 1932. This meant that it became virtually impossible for any government to gain the support of the Reichstag, and parliamentary government declined. Well that's it for this episode of my podcast. Over the next couple of days I'll be releasing a lot of podcasts as I have a test on Wednesday. Please subscribe to be notified when these episodes are released. They will also be re-released over the coming weeks. Thank you for listening to this episode of my podcast.